Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, today we're working on uh, part three of the uh, spin dexer indexer, and uh, we're going to do a few more parts on that. Um, the uh, we're going to modify the uh, the housing, the casting, uh, and drill and tap some holes in that. Uh, we're going to work on the flat spring. Um, so we're going to work on a few things, and we're going to continue that on. And just so you guys know. Um, I put all the drawings um, for this Spindex or Index are up on the blog site and um, the um, blog address uh, will pop up on the screen here and uh, you can go check it out and you can print the, uh, the drawings from there if you're following along uh, with the project. So um, anyway, uh, let's suit up and uh, let's get in there and let's uh, do some work. Alright, so here's a, this is actually kind of an interesting setup here. So what we want to do with this is uh, we're going to uh, drill a pattern of three holes here in this um, and uh, drill and tap those holes. Now we got to hold on to this so there's a couple ways we can hold on to it. We could use the, the strap clamps uh, like we just used on the um, index disc to kind of hold this down um, because one of the things is this thing is split and if I squeeze this in the vise and I'll just demonstrate there is that gap closes down because it's it's soft it's just air right um, so what we want to do is we either want to insert something in there and tighten this fastener down to pinch that so that we can actually squeeze it on the OD or hold it down in this direction to, to put our pattern in. And um, actually, one thing I'm going to do is we'll overlay our disc here and see what uh, what it looks like here. So I can already see I got a little a little problem here near this thing. So I think what we want to do is we want to clock that at about the start that first hole at about. Uh, 45 degrees from that slot to stay away from the all the fastener all the fastener business actually I'll just make a mark now you know the other way you could do this too um, is you could just transfer punch this also um, and kind of do it that way so this is going to be my okay, yeah it looks like you can start okay that's my starting hole there I'm just going to color that one in since I already marked it. But you know, we want to we want to do it the uh, we want to show the kind of the uh, a better way of doing that. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a shim in there. And for those of you that haven't seen this, this is a um, this is a Starrett uh, 467 um, uh, feeler gauge, uh, but what's unique about this is for starters the the leafs are very long Okay, and the other really nice thing about this is there's some really thick ones Okay, as you can see so that one's two hundred thousands one hundred thousands seventy five thousands forty thousands Thirty twenty blah 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 and it gets down into thinner ones but what I find it useful for is the kind of the thicker ones, um, you know, because you're carrying around a, you know, a perfectly ground shim that's a hundred thousandths or two hundred thousandths or whatever, right? I mean, and obviously you can stack them up and make whatever you want, right? So this is a great use for this, right? Let's, uh, let's just probe it a little bit. Okay, it's thicker than 40. Okay, so the 75 looks pretty good actually. So what we're going to do is, so it's it's got these index rings on the back, so we're going to drill and tap on this side so this doesn't mess with our drilling. I'm just going to put that on the bottom like so, and then I'm going to snug this, um, trying not to block the camera with my big meat hook hand, but uh, it doesn't oops, it doesn't always work. Okay, so now I got that clamped in there and on something hard and I can squeeze it. Now, whenever you put rounds in the in the vise, you don't 
you don't want two point contact like that. As soon as I start drilling on that, it'll bleep, it'll it'll just jump out of the way. So what we want to do is use our V block trick. Okay, I'm gonna drop a V block in here, like so. This is kind of a convenient handle, actually. So I'm just just lightly kind of clamping it here, and uh, I'm just gonna see what I need for. Okay, inch and a quarter parallels would be really nice. Those are a little lower, but let's drop some in there. Nice thick ones here. I'll let that drop down on it. And then making sure my V blocks up. And this is just light clamping. Now what I want to do too, since I want to clock this thing and mess around with it, I'm gonna secure the um, the V-block to the uh, to the vise, and for that we use our uh, our little parallel clamps, and I really like them for this thing here because they re they reach into that little space there, right, and they lay nice and flat. Try that. You can't do that with a regular C-clamp. Okay, so now that's nice and uh, nice and tight as can be. Okay, I'm just going to crack that and, and then hold it down on the parallel. So now we really want, let's see if I can rotate it that far. Can I go that far? Can't really go that far. It's probably close enough. Well, well, we'll examine that. I'm just going to fold that down out of the way there. Right. A little shim. All right, let's just try that one there and see what that looks like. Yeah, it feels nice and solid when I clamp on it. So if I put a hole right there. Actually, with this uh, this little program that I was using for the bolt circle, I can start at any angle that I want. So it says this is zero. I can say, hey, I want to start at 15 degrees or whatever, and uh, um, and do it that way also. Well, actually, that works right there. Those are all. So if that that one's at 12 o'clock there, those two don't interfere with the fastener and this one doesn't interfere with the thread so I'm just gonna call that good okay so we're in there pretty good just do that little tap make sure we're secure then we'll do our uh, our kind of eyeball lineup here I'll drop into the hole and you can see you know these techniques we just use them over and over and over and over again oops we use them over and over and over again, and uh, so you get you get a lot of practice if you just kind of use the same toolkit, right? All right, that doesn't look too bad. All right, All right now we'll indicate that, and um, and then uh, we're going to drill and tap some holes. Six. 
x negative. So here's another um, use of the uh, this the mini pallet system here, and these are the little strap clamps that we've been talking about. Um, so I have a couple of discs here, and I need to drill uh, the same pattern in both of them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a uh, kind of a uh, low profile V block here. that so these are just going to be a stop for the uh, for the part let's uh, run those down a little bit get my big hand out of the way okay so these are still loose so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push those up against that like so and find a spot that I kind of like the feel of that puts this where I want it to be and then I'll just snug those down okay so now I can pop that in there and I got a, a nice stop and then I can trade them out. So for holding this, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to, since I, I have access to the side here, I can uh, just use a clamp like this, but I don't want to put this clamp directly on the plastic. So what I'll do is I'll just put a, and I use you know, these throwaway post-it notes here for this kind of junk all the time. They're nice because they, they stick and they don't blow away uh, while you're messing around. Um, and something like... So I'm pushing up. I'm just going to pinch that down a little bit. Okay, come on. There it goes. And like that. Make sure it's up against there. Okay, so that's as secure as I need it to be to, to put a little pattern of holes around the center. Um, it's just a three hole pattern to, to mount the disc. Anyway, boom, quick and simple. You're on, you're off and going uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, you can also just use, uh, I have these, uh, there are these low head uh, socket heads here. And I use those for stops sometimes too when I need a thin stop um, when I'm working on the little uh, the little pallet plates here. Um, so yeah, then let me just drop in, say hello, and kind of get lined up there, doing the eyeball centric, and now I'll indicate that, and uh, off we go. Okay, so here we have. Uh, uh, these 5C uh, um, spin spin dexers or spin indexers, and uh, here's one that's assembled, and uh, here's one that I've disassembled. Now, a good one of the things that we have to do with this project here is um, we have to mount a little uh, a little groove block here on the uh, on the backside of this, so. Really what we want to do is we want to machine this paint off of here and get a nice flat surface. And while we're at it, um, we want to machine these, these sides all the way around. And the reason for that is now we, then we can put it in the vise uh, easily, which is a real quick way to get this up on the machine uh, when you're using these. Um, so here's, here's a stalker here, and you can see it's got you know some pretty snarly looking uh, um, paint and casting and you know it's just not a great uh, it's not a great gripping surface um, anyway uh, so the question is now is okay so great we want to machine the sides in the back how do we hold this mess uh, you know this casting here how do we hold it on the machine to, uh, to do that work so um, so there's a couple ways we can go with this um, I would suggest taking this apart and um, they're pretty easy to take apart. Um, if you take this, uh, <clears throat> if you take this little collar off of the back here, basically all the guts come out of the front and leaves you with a bare casting. Um, you know, this tube comes out easily right there. 
so you can take it apart and you can get down to the bare casting pretty easily so which looks like this okay so um, we've got we've got two good reference surfaces on this to start with we've got the bottom which is already machined and, uh, and ground on this one and then uh, we've got this front this front face here so uh, those are our two reference surfaces that we have to work with and uh, so that's what we're going to use to uh, to sort this thing out all right so let's get this up in here now this one uh, uh, I got this one from my old toolmaker friend Charlie and he had already kind of gone around the outside of this and, uh, and machined it but I still have this one little spot here that I want to that I want to machine um, flat for the the half index block um, so like I said we got two good reference surfaces we got the bottom and we got this face so I'm gonna put the the back face against the uh, the vice jaw and this good face down like that and then I'm gonna put a little piece of, uh, since the casting is tapered a little bit, I'm using a little piece of aluminum filler rod here uh, down at the bottom here just to kind of conform uh, a little bit to that, uh, that face of that casting. And then I'll just tap this, okay it feels pretty, feels pretty solid. Okay, give it a little bit more, and you can see, I don't know if you noticed that, but that rod bent a little bit as I put a little pressure on it. Okay. Alright, so, um, let's see, what do I want to do? Do I want to indicate that? Um, yeah, I don't think so. It, 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 look, it looks pretty good to me. It, it feels good in the vise, so that's what matters. I will show you another way, though, that we can that we can do that. Um, actually, let's do that. Uh, uh, let's do that first. Um, well, let me see. Let me think about that. I'm going to machine that. Now, I think I'm going to machine this first. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's this area here. Um, so that's actually not a bad way to start. And then we end up with another uh, another parallel side. So what I'm going to actually do here is, is I'll take all that off and then I'm just going to take a few thousandths off of this right here um, just to square that so this whole side will be square. And I'll bring it down to this level here so it's all kind of in one plane. Alright, so we're in, we're, we're tight, let's get a tool going here. Okay, so we're set up with the inch and a half uh, Sarah tip here. Um, let's see how this uh, behaves on this cast iron. And I can smell the paint <laughs> coming off of there. So that was about 10 thousandths there. That feels pretty good. Just drop down another. Uh... So I measured this surface from that one and it was down 20 thousandths uh, um, from the, uh, this one.
probably going to skim this just a teeny bit here. Maybe one and a half thousandths. Turn this up a little. I can see a little line there, but I can't, I can just barely feel it. We're going to take this over to the surface plate and uh, do it on a little bit of paper afterwards too, and that uh, little witness line will probably go away. This is about uh, 1800 RPM with this particular tool. These are uh, Cermet uh, inserts. Um, I didn't turn them before I did, uh, I didn't rotate the inserts before I started this cut. Um, maybe I should have, but one of them was nicked a little bit, but it's leaving a pretty good finish on it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So this is just a minimal cleanup to get that paint off of there and get a nice flat kind of a datum there. That's about it there. So now we'll uh, we'll flip it. Uh, now I'm not going to remachine these sides, but I, I just want to show how um, folks can um, can set that up and um, and flip it up there and um, and and get these side surfaces machined nice. All right, so we're going to set this up uh, in a different way here, um, so that we could. Uh, we could do these sides in one setup, these two sides in one setup. Um, so we, once again, the stock indexer has this is a reference surface and this is a reference surface. So we're gonna want we're gonna put one of those reference surfaces in the back of the vise like that. I'll run this up, and I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna slip a little piece of aluminum in here. This is when you, this is when you need three hands here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to snag a parallel here. Kind of a lower, a lower one here. Yeah, that'll be okay. Oh, okay, that, uh, that'll work. 
So just let it lay against there. So I'm just putting this little aluminum shim in here so that I'm not pushing up right against the uh, right against the that thin edge. Okay, so this is just, I'm just going to eyeball it for for flat for now, like that. Get that lined up a little bit better. Okay, so something like that. So our reference surface is bearing against there, and then we have our, our good reference surface here. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run an indicator along this and get this trued up. So, all right, our trusty uh, Indicol. Let's see what's going to be the best for you guys to see here. Actually, I think I want to. Oops, I'll do that. I think. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, let me lower this. A that. All right. Crank that down. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'll bring that, see, make sure I'm still in the frame. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Like so. Get on the indicator. Get on the indicator there, like that. Okay, then we're just gonna go back and forth across there. Let's start over here. What I'll do is actually go down a little bit. Go down a little bit. I'll use the quill. All right. All right, so it's going away, so we need to... Basically, I'm watching the needle. And I'm way off. <laughs> it's already way past. Going away. Indicator doesn't lie, but it'll fool you. You know. All right, let's see what's going on. Okay, so it's yeah. So I'm watching the indicator, and when it kind of stops moving, is when I I want to pay attention to it. Let's reset the zero. There, let me uh, crank on this a little more. Make sure it stays. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, the other thing we need to do too is we really want to go front to back here also to make sure that that's in plane and it's looking pretty good. Okay. So what that means is we're perpendicular to this this face back here. Okay, so now that's uh, that's all pretty happy, and I uh, want to make sure we're nice and nice and tight. 
Now, this is not a super rigid setup, okay? So, um, um, just be aware of that. And what you want to do is you want to take very, very light cuts uh, with an end mill and um, something like a you know, half inch or something like that. And we want to take very light cuts like this. And don't try to do the whole face in one shot. What you want to do is just, is just work your way down you know, maybe, uh, you know, 50 to 100 thousandths at a time, bup, up, 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 up in Z, okay? And that way you get a nice straight wall on the side, right? And, uh, and do that on both sides. And that's aligned with the Y axis, okay? Um, you know, and if you want it real nice, double check uh, your vice tram and make sure your vice is square with the world also, okay? And, um, um, and then, then you can machine these two sides here. And so, boom, you got those, those, and that now, and you're golden, all right? So anyway, that's how you can uh, dress those sides. And uh, like I said, I don't need to do it on, on this particular one. Um, and I'm not gonna do it on the other one that I showed because that one's not mine. But uh, anyway, that's how you can clean up your base casting a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and put the, uh, there's some tap holes that go right in here like this for the half index block. So, but what I want is I want those to be symmetrical about the center line, of, oops, uh, the center line of this thing. So first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna pick up the X axis here, not off of the base casting, but off of the center of rotation of this, okay? So I'm just gonna drop the, the chuck down in there and just use it to kind of get eyeball lined up. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then uh, we'll indicate that. Yeah, drop that down a little more. So, oh, I didn't zero the DRO before, but I did now. Okay, so we're centered up on that now. Let's get this out of the way. And now, uh, now I need to pick up on this data, and I'm just gonna edge find that. Um, I'm just gonna edge find that guy. Okay, so we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna um, put these little uh, 440 holes in here. Off. Quarter inch. And so I'm just following the drawing here, these modifications, putting these holes in and these side holes. Um, and the reason for two of these side holes is, um, you know, if you're right or left handed, you may want the index arm on the opposite side. So while you got it set up, it's really easy to put that extra hole in and do that. Uh, and these drawings are on the blog, um, oxtool.blogspot.com. And, um, you know, you can print them out from there and it's the same drawings I'm working off of. All right, so I'll double check my numbers, Y250. X375, okay, looks pretty good. Oh, I don't want to go that fast. Let's go that fast. So this is just a 90 degree little spotting drill here. Let's see if that makes sense. I put a little dot in there and I just kind of eyeball it. Yeah, okay, I can buy 3 eighths of an inch off of the center line. Just looking for glaring gross errors. Alright. And then uh, temp drill hole. I'm going to drill all these the same depth. I'm going to use my little quill readout for that. Um, there's no particular reason to go shallow on these. Uh, so we want chip clearance and all that.
And it's 300 deep. I think I'm gonna, what do I want? Yeah, I think I'll just go a half inch, something like that. 400. which is plenty deep um, you know if you if you have a choice um, you know uh, it's better to over drill a bit and give room for chips and all that down below okay So I think what I'm going to do on this, um, let's see, what do I want to do here? Do I want to drill them all first? And uh, Well, I don't need to drill all these on camera, but I'm going to use a little bit different technique here uh, for tapping them. So I'm going to run that up a little closer. Okay. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen the, uh, I'm going to loosen the collet. And so my, uh, I think I'm loosening the collet. There we go. So now the collet's still grabbing it a little bit, okay? But I can turn this, so I can use this like a uh, a tap guide now, and kind of have a sensitive feel. Actually, I'm gonna loosen it a little more. No reason to be. Uh... So I'm just using two fingers on this now. So I got a pretty good sense of feel on this. So I'm, you know, I'm all nice and straight and, and I'm nice and short and everything and everything's uh, feeling pretty good there. You know, some, uh, you can also use a spring-loaded tap center. Um, But this is a cheapskate method of that. Okay, that's plenty deep there. So let's take that tap out of there just so I don't go bonkers with that. Okay, so that's another technique there. A um, little different. Uh, guys will probably be interested in that. So I'll go ahead and uh, drill, drill the rest of these and, uh, and tap the rest of these. You know, you guys don't need to see every one of them. Um, it's not... Uh, not that exciting, right? Or is it? I don't know, you tell me. So, you know, some of these things, these repetitive things like this, I try to abbreviate them a little bit um, um, just so I don't have to edit them and speed them up and, you know, horse around with all that stuff. Um, but you, let me know, you know, in the comments if, if you'd rather see all that stuff even at high speed um, or if it's okay, you know, just abbreviating it and uh, like I'm doing this time. Okay, so <clears throat> the next part we're going to work on here. So we've got the uh, the disc, the collar. Uh, we've modified the uh, the casting here now, and uh, the next thing we're going to work on is the actual uh, index pin. Um, and I've got some materials here that I'm looking at uh, for the arm, and um, I got several choices here. And I I put a thickness on the drawing, and I just you know, was kind of guessing while I was sitting at the computer there. In retrospect, it's going to need to be a lot thinner. Um, so what we have here, this is a, what they call blue-tempered uh, um, stock. Um, actually, this is a metal strapping, uh, kind of heavy-duty uh, metal strapping for strapping pallets. Um, and so when I hold it, so this is totally by feel, guys. Um, and I think that thing is a little over three inches long. So if I hold it at three and I kind of pull on it a little bit, okay, that could work. Okay, and this is this stuff's heat treated and it's kind of springy. Um, so that's one option there. This is a little hard to work with uh, for some folks. It's a, it's hard, uh, or it can be hard, I should say. Uh, you need carbide tooling to uh, to mess around with that. So that's one option. 
Um, and then what I have here is I have some brass. Uh, this is this 360 brass or 260 brass. Um, probably 260 because it's flat stuff. Um, I don't think it says. And this is just from um, uh, the hobby... Uh, the hobby metal rack uh, at the hardware store you know you go downstairs in the hardware store in the hobby area and they have they have tubing and little flat bar and wire and stuff like that well they got some brass flat and you know these are two bucks or something like that now this is uh, one and a half millimeter sixty thousandths and if I hold that at about three that actually feels pretty good there so this is the one I really think we're gonna use here um, and this is the same and then this particular one here is half of that thickness so this is a little less than a millimeter it's uh, 32 thousandths of an inch and when I hold that one that's certainly easy to to pull um, you know that one could work too so um, um, you know this thing resists force in this way right which it's actually yeah, I don't want to jab my hand here so if I push on this pretty hard you know it's it's strong in this direction but weak in this direction and that's what we're that's what we're exploit what we're exploiting here because our index pin will be on here and we'll pull that out and we'll rotate the disc and then it'll pop back in right and we only have to pull it out maybe I don't know a quarter of an inch or something like that six millimeters so um, I figure uh, better to start off a little bit thick um, and um, go that way as opposed to starting off too thin and having to uh, 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 make another one. So I don't think I'm going to use this. Um, another another option too uh, that I was thinking about too is, uh, I don't have one handy right here, is a hacksaw blade. Um, it's already got a hole in one end and it's pretty springy, it's heat treated, it's about the right width. Um, so a hacksaw blade could work for this too. Um, and that's our this is going to be our index arm here that's that's sitting uh, in this region right here like that. Okay, so we're going to get started with that and uh, we'll do a little layout. Um, we want to work it while it's rectangular as long as we can before we uh, cut away the sides and make it angular uh, as it shows in the drawing. And um, so we'll get started on that. All right, so we're uh, using the mini palette again here, and uh, we're going to do the uh, this uh, black, uh, excuse me, brass uh, flat spring, and uh, we're just going to hold it down flat on the uh, the mini palette here. Uh, let me turn this radio off. Uh, we don't want YouTube to get their panties in a twist. <clears throat> get some nasty emails. All right. Um, so what I want to do here is uh, I want to make a little fence for it uh, to hold it kind of square with the world. So I have a couple little accessories here. Um, and these are just shoulder bolts with the heads turned off of them. And um, we're going to put a, uh, a little sacrificial plate underneath it just to, so we don't have to drill into... Uh, the plate itself, and then uh, let's see if we can use that one. We'll hold the uh, and so let's see, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So, this is just a low head socket head here, and I'm gonna push that up against there, and then I'm gonna run that down like that. And now that's kind of pinned down, but it also acts as a, as a stop for that. Okay, so then let's see here. What's next? Then we'll uh, put a couple of couple of little clamps on it. And uh, some guys were asking about the heel screws here. Uh, some of them I use uh, I use set screws. And then if I need a little bit longer, I just reverse a, a regular socket head in there like that. I'm just going to hold that up against there nicely. Okay. And I'll put one over here. Let's see. So I'm going to be working down at this end. I'm going to be working down at this end. So I think I want to kind of put them in the middle here. 
Um, basically, this is just holding it down and uh, keep it from from grabbing and spinning. Uh, uh, it's not a heavy milling or anything like that. So okay, and then we'll pick it up with the edge finder. So. So there's the Y. Now the so the plastic's hanging over on the uh, on the end there. So what I want to do is come up and get close first. I don't want to catch the plastic. Okay, so there I'm, I'm overhanging it, but I'm not hitting the. Uh, so I'm touching the plastic vertically. I'm just going to come up a little bit, and I'll lock that, and I'll back off. So this, I really backed off too much. There we go, that looks better. It's, not, it's only a sixteenth of an inch edge there that I'm, that I'm catching. Alright. And then I always dial in my hundred thousandths offset before I do anything else for the, uh, the hundred thousandths offset for the edge finder. Before I do anything else, it's real tempting to just jump and start doing holes and stuff like that. But if you forget that offset, that's just one of the classic uh, uh, bozo mistakes there. Okay, so this actually this looks like a metric size here. Um, switch over, yeah, 20 millimeter. Okay, so um, we're going to be putting a we're going to be putting a hole here. Actually, it's a big hole. And then a uh, kind of a, a, a very short slot at this end. But what, what, what I want to do is while I have it on the mill here, I got some, some, oops, some layout there that I'm going to do. Well, let's just color that in. Save myself some trouble there. And I'll color this end in here with my special Dicom Sharpie here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to get a little. Uh, pair of dividers and a little uh, a little point so I can make some center pops there. Alright, so I got the uh, my little pointer, I'm on center here, so I'm just gonna give it a little a little stab there like that. And then I'm gonna dial off the uh, um, the distance between here, this 3 inch 156. While I'm there, three, one, fifty-six. Okay, and then I'm gonna make another little dinkus right there. Okay. All right, let's take that out. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna use these little dividers here. Uh, who makes these? I forgot. Oh, these are stairs. Okay. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and sweep that little radius. Happens to be a three eighths radius. Two, three, like that. And I get a nice clean. And I'm just gonna. Um, I'm probably. I'm not gonna machine that radius. I'm just going to uh, uh, clip it off and belt sand it and polish it. Okay, and then the other end is quarter inch radius. Let's do that one while we're here. And make sure I'm, yeah, okay, you guys are still in the field of view there. So then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, can, oh yeah, that one just, I don't want to go all the way around. I just want enough to that. What I can do is connect those two radii with a um, a tangent line, and uh, we'll do that in another setup. Okay, so I think I'm ready for some holes here and some slots, and that's it. So. All right, so I got a quarter inch end mill in here now. Second. All right. 
care of the phone call there. All right, so I'm just gonna come down. I'm gonna touch on that, that plate. I know how thick that plate is. I'm gonna zero my quill readout. And then all I wanna do is just uh, uh, penetrate through that. And let's see, yeah, I'm on center still. And then I'm just going to uh, go ahead and mill the slot right to size. I'm just kind of packing and letting the, clip, the uh, chips clear. I'm almost through, another 10 thousandths. There it goes. All right, so I'm cutting a little plastic now. So, uh, what is it? The slot is 75,000, so I'm just going to back up 75,000. Let's see what it looks like. That looks pretty good. And before I uh, before I get out of there, I'm gonna um, just put a uh, plug gauge in there and see. Uh, have anything handy? Let's tell you. Here we go. That's quarter inch. Oh, looks like it's a little tight. Let's measure that. Make sure that's kosher. Yeah. All right. Maybe that end mill's a little under. Well, I want it to fit the screw pretty good, so let's see, do I have the screw handy? No. Oh, there it is. You know, when you have a when you have a screw like this, typically the threads are a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's 241. So uh, I don't want this thing swimming around in there. Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. It's got a little bit of wiggle and then it has a little bit of travel. So this is so it can pick up the different uh, hole radii uh, or the different radii in the plate. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that. And then um, let's go back to the um, other hole. Right there. It looks right. Checking my math here. Okay, so we'll pop that, and then uh, I'm just going to use this as a pilot. Then I'll put the larger uh, end mill in there and plunge through there. Okay, and then, all right. I'm in plastic now. And when you have a uh, one nice thing about this is when you have a a backup plate under here it's supported right to the edge of the hole perfectly so you get basically a, a completely burr free hole and just the cr most crisp edge that you can imagine uh, on the other side when you when you have a sacrificial backup plate like that that doesn't already have a hole in it I should say so let's um, so I'm gonna swap that out and then I'm gonna plop through there with a with a different size end mill all right, so let's. I get this uh, 340 end mill in there now. We'll just pop through. All right, that's about it. Then uh, we'll do the angles on the side. All right, so now what we want to do here is we want to mill um, the angle. So I'll show you the drawing there. Uh, so we got a little angle on that that we want to mill uh, from that's tangent to that radius and tangent to that radius. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to drop it in the vise here like this. And um, 
Let's see, I think I, I'm just gonna, I want it up above the jaw, so I'm just gonna use something that's parallel here. And since I already laid it out, I have a, you know, I can see the radius there and I can see the radius there. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap that down until it's, oop, that's not that tight. Let me tighten it up a little more. Until it's just tangent. Like that. That's still good. I think that one needs to come up a little bit. But I think you get the idea. Let me pull that one up a little. Let's do that one first since that's the tight end. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'll tap that one down right there. I'm gonna secure that. So then what I'll do is I'll just run across that with an end mill um, that's set at that particular height. I'll just mow that off and then uh, uh, we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. So let me get an end mill going. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna drop down on top of my scale there. Like that, and I'm gonna zero my, uh, my quill read out. Okay, and I probably won't take it all off on one shot. So make sure I'm tight. I'm just gonna mow that off. Like that. All right, drop down a little more. According to my readout, I got another 25 thousandths to go. Let's go down and leave about 10. Yeah, that was pretty good right there. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it right there. Yeah, I think it just clipped the line there. Okay. All right. Anyway, that's uh, how we're doing the uh, the tangent uh, the tangent angle. So I'll take that out. I'll deburr it. Actually, let's uh, get it out of there. Oh yeah, that's fine. I'll deburr that and then uh, flip it over and I'll do the opposite side the same way. All right. So there's a drawing and then there's the finished part. Um, I just belt sanded the radii and then used a little uh, Scotch-Brite deburring wheel to, uh, to kind of round these off a little bit so that it's nice. And springiness wise, I think this is going to be pretty good. So this is 1 16th, one and a half millimeter thick uh, brass strip. Alright, so here we're just going to test the springiness here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put it in the vise where the fastener is going to grab it there. A little bit more, right about there, something like that. And then, and yeah, it feels pretty good. So the pin's not going to go into the hole very far, so I got enough I can pull that out and I'm not yielding the material there. It's still in the elastic range of the material. So we're going to, one of the next things, and then, oh yeah, then here, this is the, uh, ability to to tune the position of that uh, the tip of that so we're going to modify this uh, standard uh, uh, brass thumb screw to be our uh, our index pin there that'll be next